At 130 pounds, Mike Alessi is notorious for getting huge hole shots. But as we saw in moto number one, he got a couple brake checks and a couple elbows. This time he's lining up on the complete other side of the gate. He has empty gates on both sides of him. And guys, if he doesn't get on the gas right away, he'll get pinched off in a hurry. Well, as you take a look at the Honda starting grid, there you see Carmichael on top. Now, Alessi has dug himself a hole, Cameron. He has it. Did you see the 40-yard stare Kyle Lewis was giving him behind there? He gets the 27th pick on the gate out of the 40 riders out there. There's a few riders not making the call a second moto. That's how he has the space around him. We'll see if it works out for him. But again, you got to look for guys like Carmichael, Reed, and Wyndham who are there for the hole shot time after time. Well, to the first corner, once again, it is Chad Reed with his cousin. What is up with the Australian connection? Chad Reed gets the whole shot with Craig Anderson in tow. And you see Kevin Windham working right away, trying to get around. It actually cost him the spot there. It looked like Ricky Carmichael flew right by, but Chad Reed again in the position. We'll see if he fights it out even tougher here in the second motor because it is the deciding motor. Remember, in two motors, you combine the scores for the overall victory on the day. That's what they're all shooting for, but as we know, Ricky Carmichael has yet to lose a motor, and you see him jumping through four at a time in some places. I don't think you see Reed or Wyndham in that section doing that. So it is Reed in first, Carmichael sits in second, Craig Anderson starting to fade just a little bit. Kevin Wyndham comes on. Look at Carmichael on the gas to the inside. Cuts across. Chad's line and takes first. How was the line change? Ben Wolf is just like, all of a sudden, okay, I'm going right, going to go to the inside and take the line. Just unbelievable bike control. Oh! Was that a tear-off or was that a look back through the handoff? That was a... A la Lance Armstrong looking back at Jan Ulrich. Chad Reed getting the stare from Ricky Carmichael. I think it was just Ricky checking to see where Chad was going. Oh, look at this. And Chad trying to come to the inside. And smartly, Chad grabbing the binders, not wanting to come together. He could have probably forced the issue and drove the bike closer to Ricky. You see Ricky coming up a little short on the triple. Chad not even jumping it. Well, they got together in Washougal, and afterwards, Ricky talked to him, and I think Chad was like, yeah, okay, I'll let that one slide, but the look now, whether Ricky did it on purpose or was just checking Chad's line, that would be my guess, and they almost get together, Chad gets right back in the fray, and folks, this is what everyone's been waiting for, the two best in the business, the 250 class going head-to-head. -head. Well, truly what, oh, and Ricky Carmichael coming just a little bit short on that obstacle right there. Remember, this is the last moto of the day that they had practice, they had day qualifiers, they have 125 racing, the first 250 moto. This is the very last thing that happens on the track. So this is the most beat down the track will look the whole weekend. And it's the roughest they've seen it. 105 feet to the landing, both Reed and Carmichael airing it out. Very few riders doing that jump. Moto number two at Millville, Minnesota. Carmichael, your leader. Chad Reed sits in second place. We'll get a Michael Leslie sighting for you momentarily, but these two are checking out and having their own private little war. It's cool watching Chad Reed because he is definitely staying close with Ricky as we get farther along. And I think, you know, he's trying to study the lines and see how Ricky does it because Ricky traditionally has a really hang it out kind of attitude towards right. motocross. And Chad's been more of the technician of supercross. And I think, look at that, you see him seat balancing it like supercross off in. This was the pass we were talking about earlier. Ricky's in these whoops. They're deep, they're gnarly. He's going full tilt. And all of a sudden, he just changes lanes, he goes right across the back of Reedy and takes the line. And there's your boy. Michael Lessie coming through the whoop section. This is a good battle for fifth right behind him, the seasoned veteran Ernesto Fonseca. We remind you those who are just joining us, Michael Lessie making his pro debut here, a 16-year-old phenom bypassing the 125 class and going right to the 250 class. So Ernesto Fonseca right now sits in sixth. And Ernesto has had a couple of fifths this year, so we'll see if Ernesto can track down the youngster. I believe his best overall finish was a fourth at Troy. And Michael Lessie has the speed. We talked about it. We talked about the talk as well. He's proving right now that he does have what it takes to run with the big guys. And I know a lot of the big riders have discounted him, mainly because of the way he, his family, and the people around him have talked about, oh, Chad Reed is down on the course. So that's one of those uphill jumps. And oh, wait. Oh! Chad Reed gets drilled. Hamlin just 
as he and he just got the four stroke started. It's just in a blind corner. There's nothing either one of them can do. It looks like the flagger was back behind the knoll of the hill. You can see it looks like Hamlin and, and Reed both kind of oh jumping my. around and Reed knows he needs the points, but trying to pick up the bike and now we got some people helping out out there. Scary situation, riders running into each other like that. They've got nowhere to go and Chad just had to bail out. There's clearly oh. a yellow flag waving weather. You know, you got to remember the pitch that Sean Hamlin right. is coming up right there. It makes it tough to see. And now back to Alessi. This is the battle for fourth because Reed has dropped out. He's on the side of the track. We're going to report on him momentarily. But Michael Alessi, by virtue of that, moves up to fourth place. And David Villeman. So they'll go to work. And Villeman gets the inside line. Alessi's going to try to hang it out on the outside as they make this right hand sweeper. And Alessi trying to carry the speed, but he ends up coming right into the line where David is. And uh, Michael Alessi's not going to pull anything over on David Villamy. I mean, he is a veteran. He's been around, and he knows where the lines are and how to take them, regardless of speed, which, again, David Villam is one of the fastest riders in the world, and he's proven it right now that, you know, Michael Alessi's fast, but he's still quicker. Do you, do you think it would have been better, and we'll talk about this after we take a break, whether Michael Lesson should have gone to 125 first or 250. That is subject for debate, but what we do know is Ricky Carmichael is your leader, followed by Wyndham and Tortelli. Back to Millville in a moment. Welcome back to Millville, Minnesota. Moments ago, Chad Reed taken down by an unsuspecting Sean Hamlin who came over hill and didn't even see him. Meanwhile, Ricky Carmichael now has got clear sailing. Unbelievable turn of events for Chad Reed. Let's send it down to the track and Jamie Little who's standing by with Chad. What happened up there? You were off and then all of a sudden you disappeared. Just messed up, just hit a hole and you know, didn't have the bars. It's a shame, you know, the, I, I couldn't get the bike started because the shifter when John Hamlin came up over the jump and hit me and otherwise I was fine. And I couldn't get the bike started without somebody helping me move the shifter and you know, when you got outside this, it's like, they're going to black flag me anyway, so uh, I waste my energy. And the worst part was, you're on a hill. <laughs> yeah, I know, and Sean landed right on my leg, but uh, lucky I had my new Tech eight, uh, my new tech 10s on, so I'm safe. Your legs are good. Yeah, my legs are fine. Cup break. First DNF for Chad Reed. Well, getting it in there for the Alpine Star safety, a big factor here, but what he's talking about was outside assistance. If someone helps you while you're out on the track, you're going to be OUT of the race. So, unfortunate turn for Chad as we see uh, Michael Leslie battling it out with a former world champion. Sebastian Tortelli on the Suzuki gets around to Leslie. Let's see who has the line as they come into this corner. Leslie on the inside, Tortelli showing the way through, and Alessi decides just to tuck in behind him. So Sebastian Tortelli currently in fifth. Michael Alessi now sits in sixth. And again, I mean, the factory superstars of the 250 class, Michael Alessi is the way he's here, the whoop monster with the, the rattle can or the cowbells or whatever. And Alessi trying to shove it back inside of the, the veteran. I mean, Sebastian Tortelli... Is a guy who's coming back off of injury. He doesn't want to fool around with anybody. He wants to move quickly through the pack. and It's kind of cool to see Michael Lessie challenging him. Well, if you went to commercial, I asked you, should he have gone to 125 or made his debut like he is in the 250 class? Well, I personally believe he should have come out in the 125 class, but that's not for me to decide. That's up to him and, you know, his family and what they want to do. And, you know... They don't have a deal yet for next year is the one thing. People are talking about Factory Honda. People are talking about Kate Kim. I'm sure he has a lot of options. Maybe he just didn't want to show what he could do in the 125 class, plus or minus. I mean, it could have been bad if he if he couldn't beat the guys he grew up or racing in the same era with. You know, James Stewart was ahead of him, but guys like Josh Grant and Brock Hepler, you know, a lot of talk about him. He would have needed to beat those guys, but, you know, he wouldn't have been able to do it. It could have cost him. So maybe coming out in the 250 class is smart. This is the battle for fourth place. Sebastian Tortelli, 103 in the Suzuki, gets around number 24 on the Honda. That is Ernesto Fonseca. Michael Lessie starting to drift backwards, and this is where I would say my concern would be with Mike Lessie. Yes, he's a dominating rider. Yes, he has all those titles for Loretta Lynn, but you put him with 40 young men, grown men, on a 250 bike, it might be a different story. Right now, let's check in one more time with Jamie. Tony Tortelli's on a roll today, just passing guys one at a time. Yeah, he's having a hard time. He fell there uh, 
in that corner, and uh, he's working his way back up. Uh, we look, we were looking good. If we could have got Wyndham, we looked good for second overall. But now we got to get Hilleman and hopefully get on the box for third. Seems like he's holding his composure together well. Yeah, he's very composed. The guy's solid as a rock. He's really good. I, I really enjoy working with him. Glad to see number 103 out here doing so well. So, Ricky Carmichael continues to lead in typical Ricky Carmichael fashion, making it look easy. As he goes to the section one more time, Carmichael did not get the whole shot, Cameron, but in typical Ricky fashion, his persistence pays off and he keeps the bike upright. It's just unstoppable. Where, where is there a mistake? I mean, we've seen him almost crash, and of course, there's always going to be things happen with motocross. It's a two-wheel bike that can fall over, but he's just been so good and so dominant in the sport. You know, many say the best ever to ride a dirt bike, and he's proving it once again as he stomps through this whole season undefeated. And, and at this point, how can you say anybody's going to beat him? Yeah, absolutely no chinks in his armor. Meanwhile, Kevin Windham comes through. He's the guy that stopped the streak last year for Carmichael. And Windham losing a little bit of that pace this year, making some changes. And we wish Kevin Windham all the best. We hope he gets back to form. He's still riding fantastic. Don't don't take anything away from him. But Ricky Carmichael has just elevated the bar that much more. It's just amazing where dirt bike riding and racing in general have gone. What they can do on the dirt bike, jumping 100 foot plus jumps on the track, how fast they go through the whoops, the technology of the machines. A lot of things have changed in motocross over the last few years and Ricky really has made the most of it and his riding style just fits so well everywhere he rides a dirt bike. Meanwhile, Kevin Wyndham had a, a decent season on the Supercross Tour this year. He was there, he was battling with Chad Reed all the way and it really came down to the last few weeks and was unable to close the gap. Meanwhile, this is the battle for third place. David Villeman, who's had a great weekend here in Millville. Uh, actually, the battle uh, for French bragging rights, as it may be. Uh, Villeman and Tortelli, guys that actually grew up racing against each other in France, are close in age. And this is a uh, this is more than just out here in the Nationals. And David's sitting down on the inside, and looks like he lost a little bit of track there. And maybe Tortelli's going to get a bit of a run here on the whoop. Sebastian Tortelli moves into third place. So he will take the pride of France with him and get the bragging right to lead for this lap. Villeman drops back to fourth. And I think the one difference between these two riders right now is that, that David is fast and he goes fast and he has the energy to do it, but Sebastian just I think maybe for being out of riding for so long, and it's also part of his upbringing in the style of racing, he is just constantly on the attack, and it really shows. Meanwhile, back in front, it's Ricky Carmichael continuing to dominate. Remember, it's a 30-minute plus two laps, and Carmichael is coming close to wrapping this thing up. No one even near him. He's putting out James Stewart-type gaps. Stewart putting up one-minute gap in the 125 class, and Ricky's coming precariously close to doing the same as he works the bike there. Look at that oh. thing, it's swirling. Carmichael on a tear at Millville. When we come back, we'll wrap up moto number two. It's Carmichael, Wyndham, and Tortelli, your top three. Back at Millville, that is Spring Creek, and that is Michael Lessie, number 800, making his pro debut oh. in the 250 class. And Cameron, he is uh, the bike locked up. Did you see the wheel? It looked like it was locked up there. Now he's going the rolling wrong way. backwards on the track, back down the hill, and hopefully you can see that there's uh, no traffic there. Heartbreaking. He's running inside the top 10. We talked about his skill level what he could do and he was proven that he had the speed and unfortunately it looks like a bike problem is going to take him out of it. We'll get uh, find out what's going on with Michael Lessie. Meanwhile the white flag is out for Ricky Carmichael. One more lap and this is going to all be but a parade lap for Carmichael. And Cameron I cannot remember the last time Ricky Carmichael had any kind of mechanical. He comes to this track in every race so prepared, so focused. He leaves nothing to chance and Carmichael has done it again. The streak is alive unless something major happens, but I won't jinx him. For more on the jinx of Mike Lessie, let's check in with Jamie. Michael, Michael Lessie running at least up in six there. What happened? I oh, know. I revved it too much in the air and blew it up. Tough break. Were you having a little bit of fun out there, getting to loosen up a little bit? Yeah, I was loosening up a lot. Just the bike. You know. 
Well, Carmichael's bike continues to run flawlessly, and Carmichael is your leader. This is the white flag lap, and I'm sure Cameron, before things are all said and done, we'll hear much more from Michael Lessie in his career. Uh, that's absolutely for certain. We've seen his skill and his speed here today, running in the top 10 before a bike problem took him out, and, you know, obviously not able yet to run with the very big dogs, but I'm sure in the near future, things will start to pan out for the young superstar. Well, talking about big dogs, he is the biggest dog on the block right now in motocross. Ricky Carmichael has kept the streak alive. Nine overalls in a row. And despite the knee injury that took him out last year, Cameron, there is no chink in this young man's armor. I don't see any reason why he cannot streak through the rest of the season. Remember, we have three more stops to go. And it looks like Carmichael is going to wrap things up and pick up yet another title. And before he exits Honda, he'll add one more trophy to their case. I wonder if the guys at uh, Honda are maybe second-guessing that, uh, letting <laughs> Ricky go to Suzuki for next year. I know and one person that's happy about it. Roger Acosta is grinning from ear to ear. For certain. And he's got this parade lap because he put in such strong laps to go. He had a nice battle going with Chad Reed. Chad had that horrific accident with Sean Hamlin and had some outside assistance. But oh. Carmichael just airing it out, and that'll cause a few fans to say, holy Schmidt. Carmichael bringing it through, an impressive performance once again. Your winner at Millville, number four, Ricky Carmichael. And I think Ricky Carmichael might be sending his own message. A lot of the attention was on the uh, emergence of Mike Lessie. Well, it's Ricky Carmichael who comes out and throws the gauntlet down. Your Suzuki results look like this. Carmichael, Wyndham, Tortelli, Villamon, Fonseca, Rodriguez, Byrne, and Way, your top eight. Ricky Carmichael going 18 for 18, continuing this perfect dream season. And I know you were just telling me how rough it was out there. It is so rough today. I think this is the roughest it's ever been. And, uh, you know, the second moto, I think a lot there was a lot of things happening because I think the guys were trying to ride too hard, maybe, for the conditions. And uh, I just tried to get out there and ride right to the limit. And uh, I got lucky. There was I had some near scares out there for sure and uh, feet hanging off and everything. But it wouldn't be like me if I didn't do that at least once a moto. <laughs> Well, the overall zone looks like this. Carmichael goes one and one. Wyndham gets on the podium with a 5-2, and Sebastian Tortelli will join them on the podium. Jamie's standing by with Kevin Wyndham. When did you realize Chad was down? Well, I heard the crowd go nuts, so I figured something happened in front of me. I didn't know who it was, and actually I was coming over like that little like little hill on the way up the uphill to, to do the triple, and uh, he was he was laying right there in the track. I almost hit him, so I was fortunate to get around him and, uh, you know, get Honda 1-2. It was a good day. Great job. Thank you. After nine rounds, it looks like this. Carmichael with a perfect 450 points. Then it's Chad Reed, Kevin Windham, David Billiman, and Michael Byrne, the top five. One more time, let's set it down to Jamie Little. Sebastian Tortelli taking his second podium in five races, and who do you have with you? Yeah, my little boy out here. You know, it's been, it's been great out there, and, you know, riding it. The truck was rough, but it was good, and, uh, you know, it's always nice to have some family support, and, and that's birthday today, so, I'm, you know, I'm glad to be on the podium, and... Happy uh, in the future we'll recognize the presence. 